Bruce Lee had a great mind when it came to fighting, and that's why he's often referred to as the father of MMA. He studied many different art forms and tried to combine them in order to create a style with no style, which is what MMA is today. He also made really popular the concept of the intercepting fist. In this video, we're going to talk about what it is and how to apply it to your boxing. So without wasting time, let's box like Bruce Lee. <laughs> the way of the intercepting fist is exactly what it sounds like. Rather than wait for your opponent to finish a move or make a mistake, and then counter them, here you'll be intercepting them in the middle of their motions. And this can actually be an a lot more damaging attack to your opponent because they won't see it coming. A lot of your favorite fighters have done this. Guys like Roy Jones Jr., Mike Tyson, Floyd Mayweather, Manny Pacquiao, Bernard Whitaker, and the list goes on and on. Both offensive and defensive fighters have done this tactic. It works really well, but many people don't notice it when it's happening because it happens so fast. The first punch, and probably the easiest to apply this to, is going to be the jab, right? So when your opponent throws a jab, there is going to be a few different ways that you can apply the law of the intercepting fist. And basically what you're going to want to do is, as soon as you see the cue for that jab coming or you feel that jab coming, you're going to want to intercept their action. So as soon as they're here, right, as soon as you see that shoulder move or even that hand or even just their intention in their eyes, as soon as you see that jab is coming, what you want to do is get there first, right? As they're in the middle of their motion, that's when you want to come with your intercepting punch. And there's a few ways to intercept the jab. So one is going to be the overhand right hand. So what you want to do is as soon as that jab is coming, you want to shoot that right over the top, right? You're just going to come in with that overhand and punch with those two lead knuckles right over the top of their temple, right? So you just want to shoot that right hand, boom, right over that jab. Another way you could intercept the jab is to shoot the right right over the top, right? If you're taller, this will be much easier. If you're about the same height as your opponent, you could still accomplish this, right? Essentially, what you want to be doing is as soon as they shoot their jab, you want to push it down and make sure they're landing the punch here and you're landing your punch right over the top, right? So you'll be coming over the top with that straight right. And the way to do it is just position your right a little higher. Rather than drop it down here, you want to position it a little higher so as soon as that jab comes, pop! You're shooting that right, right over the top and catching them right on the button. One of my favorite ways of intercepting the jab is shooting the right to the body. It's going to be kind of like a half hook, half straight punch, right? You're going to be coming this way. And essentially what you want to do is you want to slip the jab this way. You want to get off the center line so that you're not in the way of the right hand either. You want to go all the way out, right? And you want to shoot that right hand, boom, like this to the body. Roy Jones actually knocked out Virgil Hill with this punch. And it was to this day one of the most beautiful body shot knockouts that exist. If you're fighting a southpaw, it's going to be the most ideal way for you to use the way of the intercepting fist on your opponent's jab, right? You'll see Mayweather do this beautifully, especially in the Victor Ortiz fight. It's what led to the frustration of Ortiz causing that headbutt. Every time Ortiz would throw the jab, he would slip that jab through his between his shoulder and his head and shoot that right, right to his head, right? So you, you basically want to make sure you got the right footing on the outside, and as soon as that jab comes, wham, right to the head, right? Jab comes, wham, to the head, wham. And you want to do that. If you actually watch the slow motion footage of Mayweather, you'll see that he kind of anticipates that jab coming, and he starts shooting the right and starts slipping before Ortiz really even leaves his chin, right? He just knows it's coming. That's the level of intuitiveness that that guy has, and he just shoots that right, Catches him right on the button, beautiful shot, and, and when you watch it in real time, it doesn't look as impactful as when you see it in slow motion. You, you really see the beauty and the intricacy of it and the way of the intercepting fist that he's applying to that particular movement. Next, we're going to talk about intercepting the hook, and I'm going to share my favorite technique that I've shared in another video. I actually got this from a young Miguel Cotto. Basically, what he does is, and what a lot of fighters do, is what they'll do is when they, when they duck the hook, they'll mostly counter it, right? So they'll roll under it, and then they'll counter it, right? So here comes the hook, they'll roll under, and then they'll counter it, right? Here comes their hook, they'll roll under, and they'll counter it. Instead, what you want to do is when you're rolling under, follow the way of the intercepting fist, right? Come here and shoot that body shot, right? Intercept that punch while they're open, while they're throwing a shot. That's why this works so well is because it's... The moment when the fighter is least expecting to get hit is when they're throwing punches. They're expecting you to go on the defensive, right? So when they're shooting their shot, they're so committed to the shot that they're not at all committed to the defense. And that's when you can hurt them the most. So when you're intercepting a hook, here comes a hook this way. I'm coming under, I'm shooting that to the body, and then I'm coming to the head, right? 
I'm shooting to the body, and I'm coming to the head. And I can follow it up with as many punches as I want, right? So under, boom, and come up again, doom. And you're getting all that leverage. It's a really powerful shot. I talk about this in another video. I'll throw the link up here. And it's really one of the best methods of intercepting that you could use because it really, really hurts your opponent. When it comes to using this method for an uppercut, we're going to apply the same thing that we did for the hook, just a little bit different because we're going to go upstairs. Right, so when they throw an uppercut at you, let's say it's a left uppercut. So if you're facing your opponent, it'll be coming from here. Right, what you want to do is you want to get off the center line so that both the left and the right would miss you just in case they're super fast or they have another punch planned. Right, and what you're going to be doing is you're going to be slipping but coming with that hook. Right, because they're wide open. When they're throwing that uppercut, they have no choice but to leave that open. So, so they're throwing their left uppercut, they're open here, and now you're coming, boom, with that hook. Not only are you ducking the punch... Right? You're sliding out the way of it, and this works especially well on the inside. Let's say you're on the inside, and you feel that uppercut coming. By the way, quick bonus tip. When you're on the inside, always have your gloves on your opponent's gloves. That way you know which hand is coming next. Because then they'll be forced to move away from your gloves while you got the gloves on, so you know which hand is coming next, which will give you ample time to defend or to intercept. Right? So what you'll be doing when that uppercut comes up, You'll be slipping out the way of both punches. You'll move out that center line, but using that momentum, you're just going to bring the hook over, right? So, boom, just like that, right? You're moving out the way. Here comes the uppercut. Boom, right there. You're going to hit him right on the button, and the beautiful thing is once you hit him on the button, don't just stop there. Follow it up, right? You want to go boom, right? And it gives you a really, really good opportunity to end the fight. If that one shot didn't, the follow-up shots will. This isn't a new concept, it's been around for as long as combat has been around. Even in the Book of Five Rings, a samurai discusses this when he's talking about slicing people into a right? He talks about this very technique. The difference is, Bruce was really good at taking complex concepts and simplify them. In this case, he put it into two or three words in a way that everybody can understand and be able to apply it to their craft. So we gotta give credit where credit is due, both to him and to all the legends that came before him that have actually implemented this in their fighting hope you guys enjoyed the video if you did don't forget to hit all those youtube buttons or check out some of my other videos i'm sean brawl brothers and i'll brawl with you guys next time